Hello friends, let us study about the general static reflexes. For today, let us start with the general static reflexes. Now, to understand as what general static reflexes are, the thing that we have to know is that general static reflexes are characterized by a generalized effect from many muscle groups in the body in response to a stimulus that arises as one side of the body. Okay, so here it says that this is a generalized effect where many of the muscle groups of your body will be involved, where you will have the flexors as well as the extensors coming into picture. And this is in response to a stimulus, which probably would have arises from one side of the body, you know, where as if you have uh, flexed your neck or you have extended your neck and because of the neck extension, there was kind of uh, writing reflexes elicited. Broadly, general static reflexes can be divided into three groups. They are attitudinal or statotonic reflexes, long loop stretch reflexes, and the writing reflexes. We are going to study each one of them. Let us come to attitudinal or statotonic reflexes. How is it initiated? This is initiated when the attitude of the body is changed while standing on an inclined plane. How do I understand this? I'll tell you with an example. But first of all, let us just go as what are the different types of attitudinal reflexes. They are two. Basically, the tonic labyrinthine reflexes, which will involve your vestibular apparatus and the tonic neck reflexes, which is going to involve the neck muscles or the cervical proprioceptors. Let us first understand this table and then we'll go and try to understand what are the tonic neck reflexes. Here is a table which is showing what are the reflexes, what is the stimulus for it, what is the response for it, who all are the receptor and what is the uh, center. As I told you, the neck reflexes, as if head turned to side. You, you must have seen it in the babies and infants. So if the baby's head is in this side, what will be the position of his limbs? The half of the limb, the leg and the hand of that side, they are extended. How about the opposite side? Opposite side, hand is also flexed and leg is also flexed. Since there is no symmetry between, it's not that both the limbs are flexed or both the limbs are extended. If I think of ipsilateral and contralateral, hence we call it as asymmetrical. Symmetrical tonic neck reflexes, I think we can relate it to our animals whom we were doing the dorsiflexion of the neck. I think what symmetric tonic neck reflexes, what is happening here? The baby is sitting. When he is sitting, what is it? There is no, there is stretching of the neck muscles over here and then they are going to go to the reflex, going to the center and then we have the efferent fibers. Now, efferent fibers which come, what do they do? They cause the extension of the forelimb, both of the limbs on both the sides, right side as well as on the left side and there is flexion of the hind limb, both right and left. Since the both the right and left are extended or the right and left are flexed, we call this as symmetrical tonic neck reflexes. Okay. If the stimulus is that as if you know your head is up, as we see in the dogs, when they sit, they sit with their head up. When they see sit like this, their front limbs or four limbs are extended and their hind legs are flexed. That is also an example of tonic neck reflexes. To make it more clear, let us take this reflex as a reflex pathway and we are trying to understand the different components of the reflex pathway. So what are these? First, the tonic neck reflexes, they are produced in response to alteration in the position of head. We had seen it. Tonic neck, take it from here. Tonic neck reflexes, they are produced from the neck, from the neck area. The proprioceptors which are present in the neck area are going to get stimulated and they are going to send the information to the higher center. And from the higher center, there will be the descending fibers coming to the 
muscles whose all of the function is to keep your body in a position to keep your body upright or you can say to be keep your body balanced what is the stimulus here the stretching of the neck muscles so we have seen especially this tonic neck reflexes are very well appreciated in small kids the stimulus is the stretch of the neck muscles the receptors are the pacinian corpuscles in the ligaments of the cervical joints particularly the atlanto occipital joint and also the muscle spindles of neck as you are stretching the neck you know for tonic neck reflexes how do we elicit in a small baby or how it is elicited here when they turn their head on one side you know what is happening there the proprioceptors which could be the pacinian corpuscles present in the ligaments or maybe the joints or the muscle spindles of neck they are going to act as receptors and they are going to respond to the stimulus of stretch by contraction so we know in a stretch reflex if the stimulus is stretching the final response is contraction but here since a group of muscles are going to be involved we'll see that what happens to the limb okay so what happens here is the center is medulla oblongata and how about the efferent efferent is cortico spinal tract 